everyone! Welcome to my channel, Everyday I'm Mothering. Today I'm going to be talking about our main homeschool curriculum that we use, and that is Torchlight. It's one of my favorite programs and one of the reasons that we love homeschooling so much. This will be our third year homeschooling, and we've used Torchlight as our primary curriculum each of those years. Now I am going to do a more in-depth video of each of the levels we've done, and that will be Kindergarten, Level 1, and then we're going to be doing Level 2 this year. But I'm going to try to keep this video just kind of a brief overall introduction to Torchlight. But make sure if you haven't yet to subscribe to my channel, click the button below, and you'll be notified when those in-depth videos pop up. So if you're interested specifically in those levels, it'll be good to check those out as well. So if you're new to the world of homeschooling, or even if you've been doing it for a while, you know that there are a ton of curriculums out there. There's all different types of homeschool styles, um, things you're looking for, the way the curriculums are set up. Going into it, I knew that I wanted something that was more eclectic, so it wasn't just stick a video in and watch it or just hand your kid workbooks. I really wanted something that were hands-on, a game learning approach, and I knew that I wanted it to be literature-based. My girls and I love books, we love to read, and that's really where I wanted our curriculum to focus so that they would build that love of learning from the beginning. I always wanted it to be very explorative, looking at what topics they like, what can we go more in depth of, and really engaging them in a conversation where they're enjoying the learning process and it doesn't seem, you know, mundane or really time consuming where they feel like they're just doing a bunch of busy work. That was not what I wanted. I found Torchlight, it was like immediately, as soon as I saw it, I knew that that was a curriculum for us. When we started a couple years ago, she had just come out with the kindergarten. So we were one of the first ones to try that. Since then, she has introduced more levels. Now they have, have pre-K through level three, and I know she's still working on level four now. So this curriculum is geared more towards elementary students. I know some people do use it for their early middle school, and it works out okay for them. But if you have learners that are more middle school or high school, this probably isn't gonna be the video for you. But for elementary, it's perfect. So what Torchlight is, is an eclectic program where the creator pulls in things from literature books, music, art, there's science, there's hands-on activities, there's geography, there's world studies. But through all of that, there is this center approach of kindness, empathy, diversity, understanding, and it's built, built around a scientific-based structure where you're asking questions, you're exploring things. But at the same time, I love that the program really embraces diversity, different cultures. There's a real, real mindfulness and intent with the books that are included in this curriculum. For example, if you're studying a country, then the book is going to actually be written by someone from that country. So you're getting a native perspective of that native history. And I think that's so important. Also, it really makes sure to have strong female leads in a lot of the books, you know, so often mostly strong male leads in these books. So I love that focus of making sure to include strong women. Guilty in this curriculum to really have a discussion in an age appropriate manner. It's about discrimination, race, immigrants, disabilities. A lot of differences are really embraced in this curriculum. I personally just love that. For example, in one of the books about inventors, have you thanked an inventor today? It's celebrating all black inventors. And so there's just little things like that that make such a big difference early on in learning and the type of books that we're introducing our children. Torchlight is a secular program. And so I just wanna clarify that real quickly. Sometimes there's a misnomer around what secular means. It doesn't mean anti-religion or atheist or anything like that. It simply means that religion is not included in this curriculum. So a lot of the times with homeschool curriculums, you'll find that they are religious based and it's typically from a Christian perspective and that's really built into the entire curriculum. Whereas with a secular approach, you'll really just have your educational piece and then you're free to add in your own religious studies, whatever that may be and whatever religion that may be. So what I love about the secular approach is that it's really open to anyone to use. And within the program, it does talk about religions and introduce them to your kids, but it talks about all the religions. And it's more of a philosophy of religion and educational standpoint. I personally love, and my daughter has really enjoyed learning about a lot of the different religions. If you are looking for a program that is really centered around religion, Christianity, I encourage you to still look at Torchlight and see if you can add in your own piece. Don't roll it out just because it's secular. It really just makes it more available to more people. The way that Torchlight is structured and works is you purchase the PDF and it's about $40 for the levels. 
and then you'll need to print that out or not. You know, you can just use PDF, whatever works for you. But I like to print mine out, and so you'll have your notebook for the year. And it's kind of a teacher's guidebook. And so it'll lay out what you need to do every day for the 36 weeks. Typically with the levels, they'll have literature, poetry, music, art, history or geography, some type of personal development, and science. So with this program, you will want to supplement English and Math, and I use Right Start Math and Logic of English, and I will do separate videos on each of those. So again, make sure to subscribe if you haven't, and you'll get notified, and you can check out those videos as well. Each level of Torchlight has its own theme. For example, kindergarten is a view of the world type approach. So you learn about different countries, the animals in those countries, cultures, you'll even cook some food from the country, and then you'll add in, you know, your other pieces of literature and science, and sometimes they'll coordinate with each other for that week, sometimes they're just fun add-ons. But that is kind of the basic theme of kindergarten. For level one, it's ancient history, and you know, the science is learning about the body. So everything kind of centers around that again, with additional add-ons that may or may not necessarily coordinate, but that's the general theme. And then level two is medieval history. So there's kind of a central theme, and then you always have your general add-ons of the subject areas. And it's laid out in the book. There's a lot of flexibility there. So you can choose to follow it exactly as she provides it to you. My first couple of weeks, I did that with kindergarten. And then I realized for us, it worked out better to just read all the books, like in Monday morning. And my girls, like I said, love to read. They'll sit there with me for, you know, two hours straight and just listen to the books. So we were able to knock out an entire week of Torchlight and a couple hours on Monday morning. And then we would go to the library and find more books about the subject. And we really dug in throughout the rest of the week. And we would do the activities and the cooking and those things throughout the week as well. There is flexibility in how you pick and choose when you do things and how much time it's going to take. And I don't want to get too into that in this video, but I'll be doing a video about our day-to-day -day routine and structure so you can get some ideas from that. The thing I want to make sure is very clear in this is that when you purchase this curriculum, it is not an all-in-one box style curriculum. So you're not getting everything you need in that $40. That is just your base outline, your plan, the activities, how your things are going to be structured. You will still need to purchase the books, the primary you know, bulk of the curriculum. Now there are some options there. I don't want to say you have to go out and buy all these books because that can get very expensive. There are a lot of people who will check the books out from their library. They will probably purchase the spines. And when I say it's the spines, there are several books in the curriculum that are used week after week. So those are the books you'll want to own because those go throughout the entire year. But then there's a lot of books that you just read once in one week and you're finished. So you can just check those out from the library. For us, I chose not to do that. One of the main reasons being I didn't want to worry about not being able to get the books that week and trying to plan that out week for week. But also, so as of right now, you know, I have three girls. So each of them are going to be going through this level. So for me, it made sense to go ahead and purchase the books. It's a one-time cost for this level. And then each of my girls will be able to move up and use those books in this level again. And I won't have to purchase anything else. When I say I purchased the books, again, I didn't go purchase all these new. If you do that, you're looking to probably spend upwards of $500 to $800, just depending on what you get and the cost. Because these books are going quickly on Amazon and the prices are really being gouged. I've seen some for like $48, $50 for a book, which is ridiculous. The suggestion is to look at buying used books. And my all time favorite source for that is Book Outlet. Kind of misleading to even say used books with Book Outlet. What that company does is they buy books from bookstores that have a bulk supply that they're just not able to sell. And the Book Outlet sells those at a significant discount, but they're actually new books. The only thing with Book Outlet is when you buy the book, they put this little mark on it. So you can see there, it has that little red mark on the spine. That's it. And you can get books for, I don't think I've spent more than $5 on a book. Usually they're two, three dollars. Books are normally 16, 18 dollars. So that is where I get the majority of my books. And I'll put a link down there below where you can get a discount on your first order with Book Outlet. But my tip to use them is to go ahead and create a wish list, put all of the books from the curriculum in there, and then you'll get an email when they get them in because they only get a limited supply and it changes daily. But your biggest savings is gonna be your initial order when you go in and you'll probably be able to get a bunch of them at one time. 
If the ones that you can't find on Book Outlet, my other tip is to use bookfinder.com. And when you go there, you'll just type in the name of the book and it will automatically search through all the used book sites and it'll give you the price, the condition, and you can easily just link to each of those and buy them. So it'll pull things from like the A books, the Alibis, Amazon, eBay, all of those places. So it's an easy way to find them. And I will go through, I'll do book outlet, book finder, and then I will go through also the used ones on Amazon until I get a good price. And then typically I end up spending probably anywhere between $200 to $300 on a level, just depending on how good of the deals I can find. And like I said, it's a one-time cost for me with the $40 curriculum. And then if you wanna print it, you know, I like to print it from Headquarter HQ for my homeschool things. It's probably about another $50 for that. Just the selections that I use, you can make it cheaper based on how you wanna print it. And then that'll be about my total cost, you know, upfront for that level. Books are the primary focus of this curriculum. I just really wanna talk and I could talk for a long time about this because I love it so much, but I won't. But these books are just gorgeous. They are beautifully written, especially for this level of children. You know, the novels, we've just been so impressed. And a lot of the times we'll start with one book that's in the curriculum and it's a series and we'll want to go and get the rest of the series. My daughter during the level one reread so many of the novel books just over and over again on her own because she loved them so much. So I cannot stress how good these books are. And there's some that we would have never found without this curriculum. You can go online to Torchlight without buying the curriculum and you can look at the book list for each of the levels. Now obviously you won't know when to read what and how they go together and you know the dialogue and the questions to ask with the books, but you can get an idea of the books that are part of the curriculum. They're so varied in the content, the authors, you know, how they're structured, where they're from, how they're presented, and both the fiction and the nonfiction. I mean, we've just really loved them all. And she's done a really good job of going through and picking these books. Because we wanted that eclectic approach and that was important to us, another thing I like about this curriculum is that there are a lot of media suggestions to go with the week. And even stuff that's not in the curriculum, other users have put together lists that you'll have access to once you purchase the curriculum. So there's recommendations for different Netflix shows to go with each week. There's a lot of YouTube videos that correlate. And then there's the ones that she suggests as well. So every week, you know, you have the stuff that you're reading about, you have your hands-on activities, you have your art and music, and then you also have some fun videos and other ways to, you know, get this information and reinforce it. One of Elena's favorite activities with level one has definitely been this Minecraft. So level one is ancient history. I'll get more into it into the level one video, but there's a Minecraft component throughout the whole year where you get to build the things that you're studying about. So whether it's an ancient boat or the Egyptian pyramids or a Babylonian house, you know, she's creating all these structures that correlate with what we're learning about in history. And she's absolutely loved getting to do that throughout the year. There are really just all kinds of different activities and different mediums in this curriculum for your kids to explore. It's gonna be something that really excites them. At least one thing, if not, you know, multiples in this curriculum. My daughters have learned so much. And even though primarily Elena has been the one doing kindergarten first and second, you know, Adeline is just now this year going to be starting the kindergarten. Adeline has sat with us for most of these since the beginning. Now, obviously in some of the like ancient history and a little bit more dense books, she gets up and leaves. But a lot of these books, she sat there, she's enjoyed too. You know, it maybe not as in depth, but it is something that is really welcoming to all levels. And that's another thing that's nice about this curriculum. I know that there are people who combine grades and ages into one level. So if you have children at home and maybe they're in first grade and second grade, you could very easily do level one for both of those children at one time. And it'll be fine. You know, your older child may want to do some of the supplemental readings that are suggested in the book and take them a little bit farther. I know there's also some people who take levels and they spread them out over two years and really take a lot of time in it. So a lot of it just depends on your learner. The levels don't necessarily have to coordinate with grades, especially if you're coming from public school and you're making this transition, you're trying to figure out what aligns, but don't get stuck and hung up on the levels. Just really look at the books and it doesn't hurt to start with level one, just so you're kind of following through and just go more in depth. 
for us, it's been perfect just to go with the kindergarten, first grade, second grade. We've been lining them up with the level. This will be our first year doing two. I'll be doing kindergarten and level two at the same time. In addition to the books with this program, there's also a heavy focus on music and art. Listen to Tchaikovsky, Beethoven. We've read through some operas and then watched those operas. We've done arts focusing with paint, with clay, to learn about different artists. So it really incorporates all of that. And then with science, you're doing a lot of hands-on learning. I know some of my girls' favorites have been the DNA activities where they got to make the DNA. They still talk about carbon cow from one of our lessons. And then even things like learning about nature. There's a book, Strange Trees, that my girls have loved. And we even ended up ordering one of them, the ghost tree, and planting it in our yard because we thought it was such a neat tree. So there's all different types of areas and opportunities for learning in this program. You can expand it as much as you want. You can pick and choose what you want to do. It's very flexible, but it covers just so much. And there's so many opportunities for the questions and the learning, really building that love of reading, learning, exploring. And that's one of the things we love so much about homeschool. You can really tailor to their interests, their needs and their levels and grow from there. If specific questions about this curriculum or just homeschooling in general, make sure to leave them below and I'm gonna be doing a video about getting started with homeschooling and I'll try to answer as many of those as I can. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe below so you can check out the specific level videos, our right start math, logic of English, our homeschool routines, and just general questions with getting started. Bye everyone.